Hey y'all, it's me again. Yeah, I'm going to play Santa this year. Maybe. So, getting back to the tale of the generators. I said this once before in one of the previous videos, I don't know which one, maybe the last one, that I have these two champion generators, these stackable ones, and I don't think they make them anymore. They, if, if they do, it's a different version of them. But anyway, I acquired them, and neither one of them work. Neither one of them would start initially at all. So I tore them apart, and I cleaned the piss out of these carburetors. Literally cleaned the piss out of them a couple of times. You couldn't have cleaned them better than I cleaned them. I don't think. But regardless of that, I put them, reinstalled them, and the generators will start, but they surge. They surge a lot. So they're not working. They they won't run anything more than a, a, a fan at best. So I, I called Champion, the Champion company that makes these generators. There's the other one right there. And they said they have some carburetors that might work. And they were like 30 bucks a piece. So I ordered them over a week ago, maybe 10 days ago or so, something like that, and I just got them today. So let's unbox them and see what we have. I don't like having things sit around my shop or garages or anywhere else that don't work. I, I don't know why, I'm just... I'm silly like that. I just don't like having things that don't work sitting around because they're useless. It's like collecting trash. This packaged well. Packaged really well. What, what my hope is is that they're just plug and play. And I got two of them, like I said, and they look very familiar to the old ones. So I'm hoping that they are just plug and play. I need to put the old gaskets on them. And that's all pretty much there is to it. Just two carburetors in this box here. So that should be pretty easy if that's in fact what's wrong with these generators, which I'm assuming it, it, that's what it is. So let's give it a go. So you can see I already have this torn apart and not that one. So I'll put this back together, see if it works. And if it does, well, we'll tear that one apart and fix it too. And I'll show you how I did it. So let's, let's put this back together again. It's just a matter of installing this carburetor correctly. So I had mentioned on the last video that I had talked to a gentleman, let's just say, that fixes generators and other small engines, like chainsaws and things like that. Small engine mechanic. And he had told me that I asked them if they had, they had any, any parts, like gaskets for these pilot jets, which I needed, and, and these old carburetors for this. And he said, no, they don't waste their time with trying to fix the old carburetors. He says they're all disposable, and they just replace them. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So here, the gasket's already on here, so that's good. We'll just leave it on there, because this didn't come with any gaskets. And I'd marked with a magic marker right there, the stop, 
with a with a sharpie where the old uh, choke went. So just make sure there's no caps on any of this stuff. Okay, it all looks good. So we'll just slide this on here. We saved all the old parts, fortunately. So we just slide that on there. And we have the old gasket we saved here. It's a little beat up from putting it on and off so much. Let's put it back on there. I'm gonna put it on right, I guess. Get it on wrong. Let's put it on where it's the way it's supposed to go. Okay. And put on this, uh, I guess it's a breather. I don't know what it's, this stuff is called. find the bolts for this thing. There was a time in my life where I'd have just hired somebody to fix this thing. Or possibly just gave it away and went and got another one, a better one. But these, uh, generators as far as I can tell do get pretty good ratings so we'll see this is a wire to the stepper motor this uh, I think that's what it's called top of the carburetor it plugs into the uh, computer I'll show you in a minute so this just should just plug right in there Plug and play, I hope. Something's in the way here, okay. I have big fat fingers. And that just plugs right in here. There it goes, okay, that's plugged in. Now, we'll, uh, Plug this in, the choke holder. Like I said, I had marked with a Sharpie where this is supposed to go on the old one. So hopefully the new one is the same. We'll just slide the wire through there. There we go. Okay, we should tighten this down first. Get it nice and snug. Get that carburetor. It 
Don't over tighten, Jesse. Okay, I won't. I have a tendency to do that. Okay, push that down in there. The drain bowl for the carburetor hose. Push that down in there. Let's connect this. Let's tighten this down the choke. Make sure that works. Okay, now here's the main gas line. So now we have to install a gas tank. Okay, so here's what it looks like. We got it installed. I guess we should tighten this. So that doesn't come off. You can see before I took out the old one I marked where it went with a sharpie on the end of the uh, choke adjust screw. I'm making up the names of them as I go and the stepper motor plugs right into the computer over here. So this looks to be a plug and play. Okay, now, if you hadn't noticed, I didn't unplug the spark plug, which I should have, but at least I remembered to tell you guys about it, right? Right. So let's get the gas tank on. It would have a hard time starting without the gas tank anyway, though, wouldn't it? I think so. I just... Plug in the gas tank there, slide that hose down onto the carburetor. Guess I should push it down there and get on the other side because the fuel shutoff switch valve has to be kind of tucked in. Okay, I have to slide this on first. See right there, disconnect the gas tank to the uh, carburetor right there. I had the darndest time getting that clip on there, but we finally got it. We're good. Now let's uh, hook up the gas shutoff. Okay. Okay. Let's bolt down the gas tank. If this works or not, I'm keeping it together. This I can tell you.
There isn't any reason that I can think of that this shouldn't that this shouldn't work now. So let's give it some gas. And cross our fingers. Yeah, I guess I could have did a better job of that, but it has gas in it now. Make sure the gas valve is on. Okay. I'm very optimistic that this will have solved the problem. And if it does, we'll start taking apart that other one. Fix it too. to go. So I'd show you how we take these things apart. So I'll do the take apart thing for you and then you saw how to put a carburetor back in it. So the first thing we need to do is take off the back panel. Get that out of the way. The second thing we need to do is with a 10 millimeter socket deep well take off the top handles but before we do that let's take off the gas cap make sure you don't have no gas in it empty all the gas out that's what caused this problem in the first place was somebody left gas in it I'm not gonna point any fingers but yeah that's what happened you have to for storage you have to leave the gas out of these or stable it preferably what I do is I just run them out of gas unless I'm sure like right now I'm putting premium I'm putting uh, what do you call non ethanol in them so I'm pretty sure they would stay good over the winter or until the next time I use them which should be within a year but if I didn't, I would stable the gas and then run the carburetor out of gas. Or just empty the gas out completely. So there's just uh, four bolts in here and these handles lift right off. And let's save the bolts in our little tray here. 
we get a handy dandy flathead screwdriver and just pry up the top. We already took the gas tank top off of it. Okay. Now we take out the gas tank. There's just three bolts along the top of it. We just unscrew those using a seven millimeter, seven millimeter socket. So let's just do that. Before we take off the gas tank, I forgot, we got to take this uh, fuel sh shutoff valve out. I've had this thing on and off so many times. Feels like I stripped the screw probably did okay we've got that out now we'll take the gas tank off I just loosen them up then use the socket to get the to get them off completely Now that I got the bolts out, the gas tank just comes right off the top and the hose will still be connected to the carburetor. Like that. So it's just a matter of getting that alligator clip off of there and disconnecting the gas tank. Alright, I got the gas tank off. I just set that aside. And now we'll start to remove the carburetor. And the way we do that is we disconnect the choke cable. So, if we can find our tools here. We loosen up the, uh, the cable holder and we make sure we mark with a sharpie where that stop is. So let me find a sharpie. Okay. And now we Unhook the, unhook the wire. Like this. Now we unhook the, uh, I guess this is a breather of sorts. So let's unhook that. Okay. Now we have the stepper motor which comes over here into the computer. So let's get that off. Okay. Now we have these two nuts that we need to remove to remove the carburetor from the breather. Get this off. Okay. Now this should pull away from the carburetor, which it does. 
and now the carburetor should slide right off, which it does. Bam! Okay. And we've already done this part, haven't we? We put the, the new one on it. The gasket is still attached. So you already saw the rest. I'll let you know how it runs here in a minute. Get everything back together again. Okay, we got it back together again. The question is, are these small engine carburetors just disposable? I don't know what else I could have done. I cleaned them as best as I think could be cleaned. You know, I did everything you're supposed to do, including uh, clear, clear all the pilot jet and the, the, the jet and the bowl and everything with that carburetor, and still they would surge. So, I don't know. Probably other people have better luck. Probably should put a uh, fuel, actual fuel filter in the line instead of just that thing. Okay, here's the second one. Go off, engine on. a pisser. Let's see what we can do with it, if anything. Okay, you could see it was surging again, and I was all ticked off, and I was angry. And so, I called... Champion Generators. And there was an hour and a half wait on hold. Okay, well, I didn't feel like waiting an hour and a half. So I tore the whole thing apart again. Yes, I did for the fourth time. The fourth time. And I found I forgot to put a gasket on it. Yeah, I forgot to put a gasket on the end of this carburetor. So I'm going to put it back together again. I'll get back with you. We'll try all over again. So I am not going to, I'm not going to curse out what could be a very good company yet because of my own ineptitude.
So, I get this thing put back together. Probably should try it. You know what? I was going to say, I probably should try it now before I get it back together again, but I'll probably call it a day if it doesn't work. In fact, I'm sure I'll call it a day if it doesn't work. So, like everything else, I had to wait an extended amount of time to get the parts I needed for this, because there's a hold on everything. I get this thing back together again. So because there's a hold on everything, or it seems like there's a hold on everything all across the country. It's been, you know, I haven't ordered a lot. Just a couple of things. These carburetors being one of them. And it took an extended amount of time to get them because of the situation the country's going through right now. So I would recommend, I would say, just in my humble opinion, for what it's worth, that if you need some parts or you're in a situation like I was, where you have a, a generator lying around that isn't working, I would fix it yourself right now while the parts are still available. At least these carburetors were still available. Now, instead of waiting. Because, I mean, Truthfully, that's the reason I'm getting this stuff fixed in the first place, is in case of emergencies. You know, like I said, you don't want this stuff sitting around, and you need it, and then you know it doesn't work. You'd be kicking yourself, thinking, wow, I should have got that fixed. I should have I fixed that, and then you didn't. Leastways, I know I would be. So... I want to get this thing back together and, well, you know what, we'll try it again. See what happens. Sometimes wonder if that's the reason that uh, these companies make you wait so long before they'll take your call. Because they have caller ID and they recognize your number. And they say, that guy's a dummy, don't answer that. Or, you know, wait, let some schlep answer him. He's calling back again for the tenth time. Because he don't know what the heck he's doing. And in this case, they would have been right. In this case, they would have been totally right. So, I'm going to put this thing back together again. And, you know what, hope for the best. This has got, I wanted to show you anyway. This has got a, a, a carburetor bowl drain valve right here. You just, uh, you know, when you're storing and stuff like that, you just unscrew this screw here. It'll drain all the gasoline out of the carburetor. Did I say that already? I might have already said that. Well... Good practice to do that. Even if even if you're just but you know, you know you're gonna use it again because you'll forget. If you're over 60, right? You'll forget. I'm missing a screw. Here it is. I was missing a screw to begin with. But I only had three to begin with, so now my, tr my tray is empty that I put all my nuts and bolts in, so that must mean I used them all. That's a good reminder, right? So 
Here we go again. Good, bad, or indifferent. I think I've taken this apart and put it back together again like six times now. All right. Let's see. Choke that engine on. I'll never get rid of them. 